Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Ballet at Brand here. So today we've got a very special guest, uh, Crypto Kindness on. And I think it's awesome that we have so many people in this community that know a lot, not just about crypto, but about other things in life that I think people can benefit from. So today, him and myself will just be doing a little conversation, getting to know each other a little bit better. And without further ado, let me bring Jeff on. <laughs> hey, hey, how, how you doing, doing man? Doing great. Um, I know it says that we're live up in the corner, but we're not. Uh, I promise it's recording only. Uh, just yeah, up in the top right, that. it says the recording only. But uh, I'm doing great, man. I uh, appreciate you, you know, being able to accommodate some of your time. I know you've got a busy schedule, and uh, I really like the name too. When once again, when I saw Richard Hart, um, I was never turned off by like him not using his real last name or anything, you know. And yeah. with someone like. Uh, crypto heartbeat i think that that's awesome like it's it's a, a unique name and obviously he's chosen it for a reason but then when i first streamed with you for a little bit on crypto heartbeat's channel and you know saw the name i was like man this is really cool you know crypto kindness oh, so i was just uh yeah of course man i think we could use obviously a lot more of that in the world <clears throat> but i was just curious maybe maybe where you came up with that name and maybe just a little bit about about that yeah, sure thing. So uh, interesting where I came up with the name is is really tied into what you just said. We could use more of that in the world. Um, I'm, I'm a big proponent of being an agent for change. And um, you need you personally need to be the change that you want to see in the world. And when I got into crypto about six, seven months ago, uh, I was I was watching videos and I was trying to learn. And what I kind of picked up really quickly is that it seemed as though <clears throat> a lot of the videos were geared towards people that had already been in crypto for a long time. And, you know, these people are spitting out their acronyms and they're talking really fast. And for someone like me, I was just like, oh, man, I don't even know what's going on here. So um, I thought it would be really good if I could create a channel where I could help people that just have no idea of what they don't know. You don't know what you don't know in this space. And mm -hmm. I want to create a channel that's also really welcoming and inviting to people that uh, think they might have stupid questions or or perhaps if they were to ask them somewhere else would be told they're stupid. Because um, that was the other thing I learned. <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, maxiism, if you will. Um, and there's a lot of, totally. in, in, not, not in our community as much, but in, in a lot, just any community you go to. Uh, if you go in and ask questions and, and you happen to be a newbie, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you're an idiot. You're a pleb. You're, you know, they answer with insults. And that's just not that's not how I am. So I, I wanted to create a, a channel and a station that was welcoming to all people uh, and that ultimately sought to be the change I want to see in the world, which is just people being kind to people. So I thought crypto kindness and um I was actually surprised that the name was available. I was like, wow, yeah, am yeah. I really the first person that thought we need a kind person in crypto? <laughs> Maybe that's a little <laughs> bit sad, but it worked out well for me. So um, yeah, that's where I came up with the name. And uh, I've been really, really surprised, I guess, uh, that it, it's been so well received. I guess I was on to something when I thought that the uh, the community needed this because a lot mm. of people have reached out to me and said, you know, just like you're saying, like, that's a great name. I really appreciate that you're doing this. And, you know, you've answered a bunch of questions I had that I've asked in other chat rooms and people have just said, well, you're an idiot. Get out of here, you know, followed with uh, various and sundry insults. So, um, yeah, so that's I, I just seek to be the change I want to see in the world, man. No, that's that's awesome. And, uh, you know, what a what a great explainer for the name. Um, I know, I know, yeah, we'll, we'll cover a little bit about, you know, some crypto and stuff that we're in and, and some other stuff later, but, but to kind of get to the, the heart of it and to the point, uh, that is a, an important thing that you do mention, right? When, and whether it's anything, not just crypto, but any other thing that someone's trying to research, but if, if someone has, you know, honest, valid questions that they're trying to ask and they're being met with you know, like, like hostility or <laughs> yeah. like you mentioned, like uh, being insulted and things like that. Well, then that's no way for the person that, you know, is educated or whatever, or has been in, you know, in that no for a little while, that's no way for them to get what they say they want, which is more adoption and more people coming on board. Absolutely. And so I agree with, with what the, uh, the approach is, is that, 
And, uh, you know, speaking of Crypto Heartbeat, uh, I know someone like himself had mentioned that he he had gotten in, I think, like 10 days before big payday for, for Hack, so day 341. And uh, long story short, when Pulse Chain had come out, he's like, oh, let me let me uh, interact with the Telegram rooms and things like that. And, and same thing where some of his questions, and, and not always is it this way, but it just goes to show you how uh, how how that can kind of have like a salty taste is where, yeah. you know, some of his questions, you know, people were kind of combative or they had thought it was FUD or things like this, you know, wanted to ban him and stuff like this just for Jeez. asking like, you know, genuine questions and, and just trying to learn more. So I think that that's really important. Um, and, and kind of someone like yourself had mentioned this for, for other people, but, but to kind of be, you know, a leader by example and, and maybe not following the, the rest of the crowd that, may or may not be participating in those behaviors, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's interesting you mentioned uh, Crypto Heartbeat. Uh, I've become pretty good friends with Matt. And just just to think that somebody would threaten to ban that dude from a channel is hilarious. <laughs> when you watch his content and just how genuinely caring he is to, to I could just see it going down in the stream. Like he comes in and, and asks a thought, which is just critical thought. You know, if you're educated and you want to learn more about something, critical thought is important. And um, I think that one thing we need to do in our community is really work to, to be careful about the fine line that separates FUD from critical thought. Uh, mm, because, mm -hmm. you know, FUD, Certainly, we don't need people saying this is bad, this is terrible, you guys are, you know, all this type of stuff. But if somebody comes into our community and says, hey, I'm interested in this, but I've read somewhere that, you know, there might be these challenges or these concerns exist, and can someone please explain that to me? That's not FUD. That's seeking to, to learn. And, um, you know, mm. they've, they've taken the first step to, you know, whether it's come into our, our Telegram channels or put a, a question on a video post, they've taken that first step to learn more. We shouldn't shoot them out of the sky. Yeah. We shouldn't just come out, you know, Yosemite Sam guns blazing. We should just like, hey, palms open. How can we help you? Absolutely. Appreciate you coming in. Welcome to our community. I recognize there's a lot of crap out there on the internet. How can we help you? What questions do you have? And just that little paradigm change, if, if the whole Hex community and Pulse community can do a little bit better about that, um, you know, people are going to flood in. People like to be in an environment that is welcoming and kind. It's true. And, you know, and, and I agree. Uh, the other thing is too, is like those telegram rooms, man, they're freaking huge. Like uh, the <laughs> yeah. one for Pulse Chain now, like, honestly, I, I haven't really participated in it, uh, participated in it in a long time as far as actively in the chat, but I used to in the, in the audio chat and things like this, but, but anyways, I think now there's like, 50 or 60,000. I think it's like over 60,000 people it's, it's insane. in Pulse yeah. Chain Com. And you know, now you've got the Pulse X and things like that. But but yeah, uh, from from like a new user to either Telegram or myself in the beginning with say MetaMask and things like this, I'm so glad that when I did have questions to Richard directly about, I mean, this was like, you know, like day two of launch, but about MetaMask and things like this, you know, instead of him calling me, you know, a dumb, dumb and like, <laughs> Hey, you know, you sent to the wrong address and etc. cetera. Uh, he was like very informative and, and same thing, uh, being educational, because I think there is, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you have a goal of what you want, which is more adoption, which is education and, and people being able to, to learn at whatever pace we all learn at, then you want kind of like a, you know, open environment in community where, like you mentioned, Absolutely. that might be, Embrace a little bit more because, you know, we, we talked a little bit about it the other day, but in those certain communities where there might be some of that kind of going on, people might be afraid to ask questions that um, other people might feel have been asked a million times and stuff. But it's like, well, those people that thought it's been asked a million times have also been in for years. What about the people exactly. that have just got in yesterday or the, or last week like these are very you know valid questions and i think the people especially that are modding and and thankfully now i've listened to it a lot the the pulse chain com the audio chat or pulse x i haven't really listened to but a lot of those mods are patient and do answer a lot of those questions one by one that i've seen at least on the audio chat but the same thing can kind of happen with the text chat too you know 
just uh, keep that platform smooth across all boards. Yeah, I couldn't agree. The, uh, the, the admins in those groups are saints. And, and I know it was mentioned in the Hexcom the other night. Um, I can't remember who it was, but they, they took a minute and said, hey, we, we all as a community need to thank the admins in these groups. And I couldn't agree more. Those, those guys are, you know, 50, 60,000 people and you got a bunch of yahoos in there. I would, you know, I'd say the majority of the people in there are good people and they seek to help. Um, but there's always a clown somewhere and the admins do a really good job of, of managing all that. So, yeah, I'm glad they're on our team. Exactly. No, that's true. Well, um, cool, man. I guess, uh, so yeah, that's awesome. You know, kind of some of the name where the crypto kindness name uh, came from. Once again, I think that, I think that is, uh, that is, you know, surprising and, and, and interesting that, like you mentioned, the, the name hadn't been taken before. And, uh, I think it's awesome that people like yourself and, uh, you know, racks the riches, like what another cool name, right. Yeah. Or, or crypto panda or crypto heartbeat. I think it's awesome that, you know, people are taking a, you know, an initiative to, uh, you know, make videos for your own channel or how you'd want it to be, you know, directed towards you, how maybe when you had first gotten in and things like that. Um, so I appreciate you, you know, participating obviously, uh, in, in the community and not just like, because obviously the people in the comments and things like that, they're, they're just as much participating, but sure. it's really cool to hear when someone especially is like willing to, you know, come on camera or, you know, have a conversation. And I mean, I think that both people can really learn from each other a lot. And so can the other people that are watching that might feel the same way and like might feel like nervous to come on, but then realize that, hey, you know, we're all just learning from each other at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to hear your your side of this. I mean, you've been in it for what, two years now, you are a true hex OG, which I think is so cool, but you have seen many iterations of the, the hex or pulse streamers. What are you seeing? Is, is, is everything just kind of the same or is there a shift happening where, uh, the community is changing, growing, maybe maturing, you could say, Oh um, yeah. Like, tell me what you see. Yeah. So I know, I think, uh, someone had, had coined this perfectly the other day that it's almost like, you know, whatever generation it is, like 2.0 or 3.0, whatever. <laughs> uh, it almost seems that we've got kind of like, uh, at least in Hex and Pulse Chain and Pulse X, you know, they're all kind of synonymous with what Richard's been building as far as like a community. But um, I see people that had, because when it was first streaming, like I obviously wasn't the first one. I mean, there was maybe five or, you know, maybe 10 other people probably before I had started jumped in. Uh, jumping in um and then it was maybe myself and and like 25 30 people and stuff and now it's just like there's like a a wave two or like a 2.0 okay of people that are just really bringing their a game and uh i forget who had mentioned this it was actually a motley investor but um it's just really cool to see the the new streamers or and and not even once again like streamers you know like you don't have to just stream right you can you can make videos and whatever kind of content people are making but i'm seeing when you ask the question of you know do i see the community maturing do i see it growing evolving uh, i would say i do and yeah. i think it's for the better and i think it's it's as we've you know come with pulse chain and as we've started to learn about hey it's not just hex which is a smart contract uh, that's been on the Ethereum network since inception. Now it is a blockchain, right? Which is Pulse Chain, and and it's going to host all of these other, you know, it's going to host the largest airdrop in the world and things like this. So I think that the new generation of streamers not only take it from like a different approach, um, but I really like their perspective. And I think that someone like myself has honestly learned a lot from them. Kind of like what what I kind of would like to. Uh, imitate or like emulate as far as you know some of the things that they do really well and um anyways i like it it's like a wave two that's fantastic and, and even with your own channel um you you've made a little bit of a change you still have the belly at brand channel but now you mm. do SciVive, which is uh i've watched a few of those videos i really enjoy them it seems as though you're taking a secondary step to educate people on on 
mental health and things uh, basically self Im- improvement, I guess you could say right. for lack of a better word. Um, what, what led you to do that? Well, uh, I mean, you know, I think I've always kind of liked, you know, it, it's, it's different, right? Whether you, you like something and, and whether you've actually led by example or, or actually yeah. done that right. I yeah. uh, can kind of be two different things or, or two similar things, but um, I've always been interested in stuff like self-help and, and when I was younger, um, even before crypto would, would always watch a lot of videos on like, uh, you know, passive income was always kind of like the thing that people were always talking about at the time, but that's obviously just the one section that I was focused on or that I was most curious about. But there's, there's also, like you mentioned, the, uh, the health aspect of it. And, you know, so many people think of it just as like physical health, but it's like, no, uh, mental health too, you know? So, uh, how that kind of coincides with each other. But, um, as far as kind of like some of the inspiration and, and wanting to do that, I mean, uh, once again, I think, I think some of the videos, um, they're fun to like educate, but it's also fun to like, you know, keep yourself accountable or like if you, if you have goals that you have written down of, you know, wanting to do a video like once a month or certain topics that you kind of want to focus sure. on that you want to improve on too. I think it's awesome to be able to, uh, you know, kind of come, come at that frame and mindset with the people that you're making the videos to and for, and then just, you know, try and practice the same things that, that you're reading or that uh, you've learned from, from the information because, it says crypto heartbeat has said the other day that I agree with um, that a lot of this information is, you know, not recycled, but it's, it's not necessarily new per se. It's just, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just stuff that needs to be practiced and kind of done and it might seem redundant to some people, but that's because they're like the core building blocks of having something work like that. So uh, for me, it's just been trying to improve stuff outside of just, financial, you know, financial success. Sure. And there's a lot of value in um, having multiple people say the same thing in a different way, because we all connect differently with folks. You know, it depends on your background and your current situation and where that person is coming from. And, you know, I could hear one person say something, you know, let's just say they're educating us on Ethereum because a lot of people have asked questions in the chats about uh, what, what is Pulse Chain and Ethereum, their similarities, differences, how is Pulse Chain going to be successful? Well, somebody from a very technical background could explain what a P- Ethereum is, and someone that doesn't uh, think in that capacity isn't going to understand it. Um, and then somebody else could come on and they could have a, a very almost like dumbed down approach. And, and the person that's listening might be slightly more educated and they'll just be like, okay, he was, you know, I didn't get that. But then the third person comes in and they all say the same thing. They just say it a little bit differently. And then this person is able to connect. So to what you said about, um, you know, none of this information is new. It's just how it's delivered that matters, especially to the audience, because every person's going to align with somebody else a little bit differently. So I mean, if it's very, very um, worthwhile to have multiple people saying the same thing so that the message gets across and eventually the right person says it that is going to connect with the person that's listening. And all of a sudden there's this aha moment. So yeah, it's great that you're doing that. I think it's really neat. No, thanks, man. And uh Yeah, I I think so as well. And, you know, it's also something that Richard talked about, whether, as you mentioned, and I totally agree with this. And uh, I, I, you know, agree with that sentiment that each person can kind of teach things a little bit differently. And one person might relate to one person that's saying the same thing as the other. And maybe they didn't coincide or or relate to the other person and and understand it that well. But uh, especially with, with anything that I've learned, whether it's financial or Richard's videos or, you know, even the sci-fi book. Um, One thing that he talks about a lot is, you know, most people don't just comprehend something like say, if you're reading a book, like the first time that you read a paragraph, usually you don't comprehend it all the way. Right. You know, usually you come back to it. I mean, for me at least a couple of times. And then, and then when you reread it, it's like, Oh, okay. I got something out of it the second time that I didn't the first time. So it's always kind of fun to, for me, at least, I went back to a lot of the older, richer videos, um, such as like the self-help, like he talks about 
how to give an apology and you know like even though i don't like to talk politics especially on my channel and stuff which which i don't um he mentions at least that hey you know instead of seeing it one way or the other way that most americans do at least like being able to he he describes like his video is like uh it's like how to describe your politics as you would like a sandwich you know and and just different things where it's like okay try try and be able to relate to the person instead of you know, differentiate and, and differ from the person because I think we do share, even if we have certain differences in the crypto community or whatever, I think we share a lot more in common than we do in different. And uh, especially if you want someone to listen to you and to to grow with what you're offering or, or what you think that they could be benefited from, like Absolutely. you should focus probably on on what you can, you know, mutually agree with, you know, not the opposite. So that's just my opinion. Well, finding common ground is the easiest way to bond with somebody. I mean, you can walk into a bar and if somebody's got the, you know, a hat on that has the same logo of the team that you like, you can walk right up to them and say, you know, whatever, I'm a Broncos fan, whatever it is. Um, and immediately sure. there's this common bond and, and a lot of the walls come down. So that, that that's very true. Find common ground and then work on discussing um and not necessarily the differences, but uh, addressing questions and, and getting helpful insight to those that are curious. Right. Well, and then like similar to what you were saying about, I mean, even just for someone like yourself, uh, and I, I think it's important for all of us to kind of learn from, but for someone like yourself getting into the, you know, the hex community or just the crypto community, uh, you know, kind of being able to treat it from that same perspective of, I mean, the name calling stuff like that's just got to go out the window like it, it really does that that kind of stuff. I mean, especially for uh, especially for, in my opinion, the people that you know have channels or have like, quote unquote, influence yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And, you know, luckily, most of you know the people that that I know or even myself, you know, try to lead by example, not, you know, not perform, obviously, that behavior that that is toxic. But yeah, but I think for anything, whether it's with. Uh, like you mentioned, you know, self-help and things like that. I'd be kind of curious to, uh, you know, see what you think of the, the sci vibe and some of the books as well. Cause I know, um, once again, a lot of it is similar information that's been taught and that's been, you know, passed down, but what do you think of it? Have you, have you read any of it or what's your kind of experience? Well, I haven't read sci vibe. Um, I will say that yet, but self-help books, um, mm-hmm. I, I read a lot of those. Uh, I like to think of, I'm not in competition with anybody else in the world. I'm only in competition with me. And I seek right. to make a better version of me every day. What what can I do today to make the tomorrow Jeff a little bit better? And um, first of all, being open and honest that I'm not perfect and I've got uh, things I need to work on. That's That's the first step in anything, admitting yeah. that there's a problem is the first step. Um, sure. So I do read a lot. I, I'm in sales. So a lot of my readings uh, fall within the sales arena. How do I get better at that? Um, but a lot of the books I read are also about uh, just better ways to approach life and minimize stress and things like that. So um, you can function better when you're not all clammed up with stress and anxiety and stuff like this. Uh, you can think clearly and you can deploy your resources better, your time, your energy to be productive. So um, not necessarily sci vibe. I haven't read that. It sounds like the principles that have driven that book are very similar to, as you've mentioned before, things that have been said over and over again. Um, but uh, just a different iteration from uh, Richard's perspective, which I think is a great perspective. He's obviously an incredibly intelligent person. He's uh, mm-hmm. he's He's been challenged with some um, issues in the past. Clearly, he talks about drinking and gaming too much and things of that nature and how he's cleaned that up. So we can all learn from each other. And, and as a community, that's how we all get better. Um, just mm-hmm. approach it as, uh, you know, these are my strengths. Here's some of the things I can share with you. I'd love to learn from you. How can we share information, share lessons, share failures together so we can all learn and get better. Um, so right. yeah, I, I completely agree with self-help books. It's, it's the best way to become the person you want to become. Right. No, that's true. What, uh, what would you say? I mean, cause, cause I agree. It's not like you have to, to read that same book or any particular one to have some knowledge in the subject. But, uh, for someone like yourself, that's been, obviously working on these things for, 
you know, some time and, and kind of having goals and in certain areas, do you have like a specific, uh, specific thing that, that really kind of like changed some of your trajectory or something that you weren't doing before, but that maybe you're doing now that, that did work, uh, as far as what you implemented, do you have any ideas? Oh man, I don't think we have enough time for me to go through all my screw ups <laughs> and how I <laughs> self addressed. No, there's there's been a, a two two or three very impactful things. Number one, um, I mentioned this in a stream I did with Rags to Riches, but um, I'm a, I'm a Dave Ramsey guy. Um, mm-hmm. Dave Ramsey, if you're not familiar with him, he talks about getting people out of debt and how to mm-hmm. do it, and he has a program that does it and it works. Um, and I, I'm blessed. My wife and I have pretty good careers. We've never been in a, a situation where we were, um, you know, struggling, but we, you know, we we're average Americans. We had debt on this and debt on that and yada, et cetera. And um, I started listening to him and um, his program, while it's still, while it uh, focuses around the debt and the whole thing is about getting out of debt, um, the processes in which to do that, a lot of it is self-improvement self-awareness, uh, kind of digging into where the problems come from, what causes you to want to hoard and buy and, and have stuff now. And so therefore I'm going to pay for it with money I don't have. Um, and that, that was a, a big change for me. And that was about a five year period of my life where I listened to his uh, radio show daily. I listened to his uh, podcast. I listened to a lot of his um, team speaking on their different uh, specialties and that was probably the most impactful thing in my life. Um, and then there's there's a book that I read about once a year. It's called um, The Art of the Simple Life. And uh, no, I said that wrong. Excuse me. It's The Art of the Good Life. And it's 52 life hacks that just make your life a little bit better. It's by uh, Dolph something or other. I, I don't know it off the top of my head. But anyway, this is a fun book to read because it's short little chapters and it just talks about how to deal with stuff that we all deal with on a daily basis that usually can stress us out or, uh, you know, cause us to be inefficient with our time and things like this. And it's a really, really good book. It's, 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 it's even better to listen to. I don't really actually read I, I, because I drive so much mm. for a living. I, I listen to these books. But that book is, it's, I, th- I would say it's invaluable because it just kind of helps you realize a lot of the stupid stuff that you do and waste time on and how you can correct it. And what's really fun, having um, listened to it now, like every year for about five years, I'll find myself in a situation and I'll just be like, okay, I need to apply life lesson, you know, 28 or whatever it is Mm -hmm. out of the book and and do this and then be done with it. So uh, that's a really, really impactful book. And I would encourage people to, to listen to that. And a lot of it, talks about things that, you know, you and I deal with, which is always having a phone, always checking charts, always checking yeah, like feedback yeah. and stuff like that. And it talks about, man, you got to just set that stuff aside sometime. And he's right. You do. <laughs> well, wow, dude, that's, that's cool, man. There's, there's a couple things that, that, uh, that I kind of want to cover from that because you sure. mentioned, uh, I mean, always being on the road, I think a lot of us can kind of relate to that, right. That, um, whether it's, you know, like you mentioned your phone or, being on the road and, you know, constantly this go, go, go type of thing. Someone like Kareem, I know has talked about it. Um, and you just mentioned it as well that, and, and I'm totally in the same book as well, where it's like, mm-hmm. um, I do consume a lot of information in the form of audio and, you know, the, the reading and the sitting down, not many people have time specifically to dedicate straight to that, but right. the audio books. And you mentioned the, uh, the the art of the good life i'll definitely be checking out i see it's uh the the rolf dobelli yeah there you um, go perfect you person that up. you had Thank mentioned you. and it's kind of interesting the the actual photo itself of the cover kind of looks similar to the you know the little tree of life thing that richard's got on the side vibe mm-hmm. but but um anyway so you do the kind of the audio book and then just things like that that you can kind of kind of improve your daily life you mentioned you know not checking in and not constantly staying like connected right to the cell phone. And, and, you know, we talked about it yesterday that, uh, you know, there's almost like a fallacy where, especially, I mean, at least for an American, for myself, you know, sometimes we want these certain things, uh, whether it be materialistic or other things. Right. Sure. And then once you, once you get that, or once you attain that, it's like, okay, now this thing owns you. Um, can you maybe, ex- oh. I mean, can you maybe share just a little bit from experience that, 
with obviously without going into too much detail, but you'd mentioned, Hey, you're on vacation and you'd mentioned oh, sure. that, that whole time you, you know, you told yourself, Hey, I'm not going to, you know, be looking at the, the crypto and stuff. Can you maybe tell us like what you learned from that or just, you know, things like that? Sure. So I, I went to Costa Rica for nine days with the family and uh, I, I had just started my channel slightly before that. And of course I was all excited about how well it was doing and I felt uh, obligated to respond to all of the, the um, questions and stuff like this. And um, it was consuming a lot of my time. And mm -hmm. I made a, an agreement with myself and my family that, okay, nine days, I'm not going to pick up my phone. I'm not going to spend any time on this. Um, and uh, it, it was like a, a good thing and a bad thing. Actually, it's not a bad thing. It's a perceived bad thing, I should say. But um, it was a wonderful time because it was almost like I lived in 1985 again where, um, you know, what, what did you do? You, you interacted with the people that are in your presence and the world, it happens out there. It doesn't happen on your screen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen on your phone. And that's where the world is the most exciting. And, uh, you know, I, I played volleyball on the beach with my daughter and, and kicking the soccer ball with my son and we're surfing and we're doing all this stuff and we're just having quality time and laughs and bonding. And really the takeaway from that was that's what's important. Yeah. Like as is, is excited as we all are, we're at this like fever pitch level of excitement with the Pulse X sacrifice just happening and Pulse Chain is coming out and there just seems like this need to be seeking more information. But at the end of the day, none of this stuff is happening fast. Um, mm, true. We don't need to. But I will say nine days later, I come back and I, you know, start looking at stuff and I felt like I missed the world. <laughs> so yeah. much happened in nine days and, uh, you know, so many messages, so many, can you help me with this? How about this? And, and I, I kind of just got sucked right back into it. And yeah. um, it, it was eye opening though, because that it was, it was a good thing for me from a mental health standpoint to step away, first of all. Um, and, and I've, I've changed my schedule now I'm going to, I'm working on getting more regimented to like, I'm going to dedicate an hour a day and maybe not even that much catch mm -hmm. up on Twitter, catch up on telegram, plan out some, um, videos, work on setting up interviews and conversations. And then that's it. Outside of that, I don't need to be looking at it. And it, it was, a, it was a great lesson. And I, I challenge everybody else out there because I have a feeling the majority of the people that are going to listen to this kind of fall in the same category is like, just put the phone down. You're not going to miss anything that's going to impact your life. Right. Um, you might feel like it. No one's going to die if you don't check the charts. If you don't, <laughs> uh, you know, post a comment on Twitter, if you don't respond to somebody, life goes on. It really mm. is. So, um, but that, you know, that's a, that's a good question. I appreciate you bringing that up. And I, I would like to talk more about that. I have a question for you. So we're, <laughs> we're 33 minutes into this really right, good conversation. Right. So if anybody's still left, we should give them what they came <laughs> here for, which is a sure, shot of sure. opium. Uh, and, and that is talking about the pulse X and pulse chain sacrifice. I have a question for you that I want to dive into about uh, mental health and the whole waiting mm. process, because we've, we've basically got to a point now with the pulse X sacrifice, it's still happening, but I would say the majority of the people that are going to listen to this or that are really interested in it, they've sacrificed. And now we're at a sit and wait period of time. Uh, but before we get into that, let's have a little bit of fun. I would mm -hmm. love to talk about expectations of Pulse Chain and Pulse X under the premise that there are no expectations of profit from the work of others. But help me understand, you've been in Hex, you're familiar with the Richard Hart projects, you're excited, I know you, you sacrificed for Pulse Chain. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think the first 60 days look like when Pulse Chain launches, Pulse X hits, hits the, the chain, and honestly, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I think that is going to be what happens. Um, all hell does break loose, and I think all hell will break loose. I mean, Richard <laughs> had mentioned that, you know, right now, uh, it, it's cool that there is there's something of tangibility, right? Something that's tangible, which is the test net. And there's version one and version two and each time that <clears throat> that he has iterated those test nets right they've they've done some improvements and i think i might have heard that there might have been version three or something like that coming out soon before the the final deployment but anyways to answer the question i think it's going to be absolute chaos in a good way and yeah, because okay. 
when when you see how many i mean dude as someone that's been uh part of the the hex telegram since it was bitcoin hex and since i had first heard about richard creating the telegram that telegram what i thought was a big community is absolutely nothing and was dwarfed compared to the pulse chain com you know i mentioned that it's oh, over wow. sixty thousand now and so what i'm getting to is that there's so many people that like when you when you hear richard talks about like a unique uh like a unique benefit statement like like what's in it for them you know like that headline sure. right that you see in the news and stuff and i think that the the world's largest airdrop is something that uh, a lot of people they they may have not heard of before and they might they may not understand uh you know the the ramifications in a good way what that can mean for them right an absolute duplicate of what they have whether it's the ERC721 their NFTs or their ERC20 tokens or their Ethereum right that gets them sure. a little bit of pulse chain i think we're going to see uh, a lot of economic growth happen within the first 60 days and even uh Trayvon James he had he had mentioned uh, in the video today and once again there's there's so much that goes on that even someone like myself that has tried to keep up or that used to keep up all the time it's impossible you know you, you can't and, and I think that's a good thing to realize that hey you know yeah. go back to the to the healthy lifestyle instead of trying to keep up with it but he was mentioning he was mentioning you know hey there's a bridge from ethereum to pulse chain and that's going to allow the economic yes. energy uh into pulse chain and going to give it value and so i think we're going to see a lot of success a lot of you know fast transactions right that was one one thing that really made you know i mean for me it was bsc popular and now lately in the past year or so it's been polygon or matic popular is mm -hmm. the cheaper fees the pulse chain i think is really gonna you know kick some serious booty <laughs> that's fantastic now I made a video uh, about 10 days ago with K4K, Colton. Excellent dude. Um, can't say enough good things about him. And one of the things that I got a lot of comments on was 1,000x, 10,000x, not possible. You guys, you know, some people weren't friendly, which I, I laughed at. Like, my channel is Crypto Kindness, and you come on, on here calling people <laughs> idiots. Like, come on. Be aware of your surroundings, man. That's true. That's true. Um, but I want to talk to you about this because the uh, what kind of seemed to be the, the the common narrative amongst these people was it's going to be a free airdrop. So on day one, the the price is going to be you know five, six, ten, a hundred times less than the sacrifice amount. And I'm just like, well, wait a minute, no, because who's selling for that amount? So I, I want to play yeah. a little fun game here with with you real quick. Um, the the first price. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm still relatively new. I'm learning here. The first price of either Pulse Chain or Pulse X is going to be determined by the first person that provides liquidity and offers it for sale. Do you? Am I right on that? Yeah, that's totally the way that I see it too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely. So you sacrifice for Pulse Chain. You sacrifice for Pulse X. At what point do you sell your first coin? And is it going to be less than what you sacrificed? Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, definitely it's, it's no. you know, it's not going to be less than what I sacrificed for. And then, as you mentioned, for like, and, and I know you were going to lead on for something else of that, but just real quick. Yeah, you know, the people that have already, uh, you know, fortunately have done well with hacks or other assets and other investments. Well, guess what? They don't need to sell, you know, most right. of them uh, don't need to sell the pulse X, the pulse chain or or even their hex. Uh um, a loan from maybe some of the yield that they're earning, but usually it's never the principal. And so anyways, I think you've got a lot of tools for success in a community that's, you know, kind of been proven before to, uh, to realize, Hey, obviously you can trade this stuff. Nobody is, is naive to that. But when we see that, you know, you can just do what's good with everything else, as far as like delaying gratification and, you know, maybe, with the products themselves, with Pulse Chain and Pulse X being completely deflationary, yeah, uh, I think you really have something that's just, you know, if you play the patience game and you kind of just sit back, eat your popcorn while while all the calamity and chaos is going on, then I think uh, I think a lot of us are going to be in really good positions 
you know, just being patient and just holding the bags. Absolutely. Do you think that uh, there will be people that wreck themselves trying to sell the top, get the bottom, sell the top, get the bottom, play the trading game? Um, I, I just, I'm curious about that because clearly based on the amount of coins sacrificed, the majority of them were hex. It tells us that hexagons are buying. All of us aren't selling. So there's, mm. I think there's going to be a really thin float out there between of liquidity and, uh, the price on that's going to go up, I think pretty quickly. So, um, what are your thoughts on, on people wrecking themselves? Or do you think this is just going to be a, a group of people that mostly buy and hold and there'll be a strong demand with, with low supply? I would love to hear your right. side on this. Right, right. Well, you know, I, uh, I mean, to answer the question directly, I would say there has to be, right? I think it would be naive for people to think that, oh, everyone's just already learned right now, especially when we, <laughs> when we right. realize, right, the, the amount of people. I mean, okay. Hex has been around for, I mean, that telegram has been around for like over three years now. Sure. Because it was maybe around for, um, so anyways, you've got people now that still trade Hex and that's fine, right? People can do whatever they want. But uh, anyways, to answer the question, I would say that that's kind of what makes uh, any market, right? When, Good whether point. it's real estate and someone is, I mean, for me, I've learned this with cryptocurrency, but then- both of my parents, they've done real estate for over 25, well, not over 25, about 25 years each together Okay. that they were doing real estate. And when I talked with my dad about this, he's like, oh yeah, that's something that people tend to do is when you first get in a market, sometimes, you know, you might think that you're, it's almost like trying to, you know, go to Vegas and think that you're smarter than the house type of deal. You know, you might, you might get right. you know, the beginner's luck one or two or three times, but then eventually it's always going to come back and get you. So sure. I think that there will be people that, yeah, that do wreck themselves and whether that's, you know, going into everything under the sun on this one, or whether that's, you know, trying to, to time the market, you know, like you mentioned, buy the low, sell the high, you really just never know what one big splash of, of a whale or someone that is going to do, you know, a serious market buy. You really never know what that can do to the common trader that thought that they were trading this little range. And then all yep. of a sudden it either dumps because the whales want to get them to panic sell and get the cheaper coins or freaking pumps. And now that person they're out of their position thinking that they were going to, you know, wait for a lower price to buy back in. Yeah. I, I mean, it is, is as, as it is to say uh, the success of the coin oftentimes um, depends on people wrecking themselves because there needs mm. to be that daily trade, that daily volatility to attract others to it. So I, I agree. I think it's going to happen. So <laughs> that brings me to another question. You've been in this for quite some time. Why is it in cryptocurrency that the hardest thing to do is actually physically the easiest thing to do, which is do nothing. Yeah. Do nothing. Yeah. That's the hardest thing to do. Why is that so hard? It's like what most people strive to do on a Saturday, sit on the couch and do nothing. But in crypto, <laughs> it's the hardest thing in the world. Why is that? Yeah. Well, I don't, you know, I mean, I, I think it just comes down to, to humans in general. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, everyone's got their own struggles and things like that. And, and for someone for like, you know, someone that's maybe trying to lose weight, it's like, well, how freaking complicated it <laughs> is it for, you know, someone to just, you know, put down the damn sugar or, you know, uh, you know, get on, get on the bike or, you know, do something active. And, uh, anyways, as far as what, what you think it, it, it's, it's such a reverse dichotomy and like a reverse uh, paradigm where, like you mentioned, you think that, you know, that all of these active trades and that the more you trade, you're going to be able to, you know, learn more and be able to time the market and get those tops and bottoms. But in reality, and especially with stuff like, you know, Pulse Chain and Pulse X specifically, but then being deflationary, I mean, once again, there's going to be people that literally just sit on their bags for years and years and, you know, accumulate more. And if there's other things that they can do to generate yield out of it, they will. But I would say it's, it's a fallacy and it's something that uh, I think that everyone has to learn for themselves, right? Everyone hears that, well, not everyone, but most people that get into crypto, they heard of you know, the person that bought it when it was a penny and now it's X amount of dollars. And so some of them, they don't want to put in the time maybe per se that that is 
that is required, right, to, to kind of learn how the system works and things like that. But they think maybe in their head that they can get to that that goal, whatever goal theirs is. Sure. Uh, they, they might think they can get to it more quickly if they can become like an expert trader, right, and, and successfully trade their way there. But Richard talks about it, that this one website specifically, and I'll do what he does, not mention the name. Um, it says that either the top or the bottom, but it's like, I think it's like 86% of the people lose money, something like yeah, that, or, or make money, whatever it is. And, and so it's like, it's like, yeah, that's the amount that are losing money, but in dollar value or whatever denomination, the amount that they're losing compared to the amount that people are making, probably a lot more. And that's how they get those advertising dollars. Yep. So I think some people, they just, they don't know what they don't know. And like, you can tell them directly, um, you know, hey, here's what you're doing. Don't do this, right? But then that's going to make the person want to do it even more. And people, I think, just need to learn from the market, from their mistakes at the end of the day. Well, I can speak from that person because I was that person in 2017 during the, the bull run. I got all excited, of course, near the top because at that point I'd heard about it for six months. And I was like, okay, well, now's my time. Um, yeah. I bought in. I expected to become a millionaire in three weeks. And when I didn't, I got bored. And I mm. sold everything off at a loss. I kept some stuff, but then I forgot about it. And I was just going through my Coinbase the other day and I saw a couple of transactions for Ethereum. And I was like, oh, I wonder what that's worth now. And it was like 2,200 bucks. And I'm like, yeah. this is fantastic. <laughs> so I went on to you know, the on-chain data and I looked at the wallet address. I have no idea where that is. None. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, because I got bored. I thought I could do it better. I had this ridiculous expectation. And so... We just, we, we need to like channels like yours and mine and, and many others, we, we need to be talking about this and just setting proper expectations with people that this doesn't happen overnight. There's always mm -hmm. a story in the media of some dude that bought something in seven days later. Yeah, that's, that's the needle in the haystack. That's not how you become wealthy. Um, and honestly, a lot of the reason why I do my channel is to give myself, you mentioned this earlier about, um, accountability. I, mm -hmm, I do mm -hmm. this channel a lot to say the things that I know that I need to do. So that way mm -hmm. it's on video. I'm saying it and I hold myself accountable. It's easier for, for me to sit here and say, yeah, you do this and you do that. But understand that when I'm pointing and saying you, I, I'm looking at the guy in my screen right now, which is me. And I need that yeah. dude to listen to me right now. And that is just be patient, mm -hmm. chill out. It's not going to happen overnight. Forget about it for three years and come back and see what happens. Which it's true. It's, it's so true. Brings me to my next question. And I talked about this before we started talking about kind of the hopium, but um, mm. you were in Hex as an OG. You went through the adoption amplifier. You went through uh, Big Payday. You've been in it the whole time. The question I have for you and something we kind of touched on earlier on in this conversation is the community as a whole, especially new people that have come into the community, we have reached a, a fever pitch of excitement. I mean, people... I can feel it. It's palpable inside the anxiety, the excitement, the, the wanting to check the charts. But the sacrifice is done. My money is there. Yeah. It's burned. It's gone. My pulse chain is gone. And it's going to be best case scenario two months before this all comes out. What is some advice from someone like yourself that's been in this for a while that um, – has kind of ridden this roller coaster before. What is your advice to those of us that are new, that are excited, and now our only option is to sit back and wait? How do right. how do we stay mentally fit during this time period? Well, you know, I mean, I'll be honest. I know, I know, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but um, it's a damn good question because once again, something like this has never happened before. I mentioned. There was a lot of anticipation, uh, similar to what seems like with, you know, with Pulse Chain and, and obviously Pulse X is going to launch the same time that Pulse Chain does. But there was a lot of anticipation and, and build up and excitement for for Hex. But none of us had had sacrificed for Hex. I mean, it was just a smart contract that you, you know, with the adoption amplifier, uh, unless you had the free claim, you were putting in Ethereum. And mm -hmm. the smart contract yourself, you know, be yourself interacting with it, you are getting the hacks. Uh, as far as the sacrifice goes, whether it's for Pulse X or for Pulse Chain, we know they're both going to launch at the same time. Uh, it's it, it's unprecedented. 
I mean, I've never seen anything like this in, yeah. in crypto. And I, I know when we were talking a little bit about this yesterday that, I mean, I don't know if this has ever happened uh, outside of crypto. I, I'm really, you know, kind of just new and fresh to crypto with it being my first financial markets and things like that. But um, the, the thing that I would say most is that, once again, I hope that, and, and I should probably emphasize this more too, but I hope that everyone that is sacrificing and things like this, they're not doing it with their rent money, with um, money that is, you know, yeah. that's, that's stuff that they need to pay back and things like this. Because personally, um, I've seen a lot of people, we talked about 2017. Well, in 2017, I think it was, you know, quarter three, quarter four, mm -hmm. maybe starting quarter two, that Coinbase and some of the other centralized exchanges uh, allotted, uh, or sorry, yeah, allowed trading with, with credit cards and buying with credit cards. And so the point that I'm getting at is that I'm hoping that, you know, everyone didn't sacrifice too much money that they were willing to lose, or at least not willing to lose, but maybe willing to... <laughs> to delay for a little while because uh, otherwise I know from, you know, being over leveraged myself in the past or just having a little bit too much exposure in the past that, you know, that can kind of come with some, some feelings and stuff and some anxiety. But sure. the only thing that I would say is just there's confidence for me personally, as someone that has followed Richard for the past four years that, Hey, when he does something, he's going to do it. Um, you know, to the best of his means, and he's going to get the best people that he can to execute Pulse Chain. And we know that the code for Pulse X is already done, but it really is that hardest thing that you mentioned of just, you know, even the nine days that you mentioned on vacation of just like, you know, kind of just letting the process work itself out. And the thing about, <clears throat> about cryptocurrency and about software in general is that, it really is hard to predict, right? We know that with something like Ethereum, which is what Pulse Chain's a fork of, that yeah. there's there's so many things that they want to do with 2.0 and that they want to improve that Pulse Chain's beating them to the punch with. Yeah. But because of that, it's also having like that first mover advantage and also sometimes taking a little bit longer than what you think. Richard calls them like hangups where something that's so small and what might seem minute to the bigger picture might really, you know, hang up the project sure. product for a couple of months. So I would just try and say kind of like what we've talked about where, you know, instead of myself consuming a whole bunch of crypto content a day, just trying to, you know, get into the, the healthier habits or just consume your time with stuff that's going to be productive because it is cool to watch these videos and things like that. But that's just going to get your FOMO going even That's more, right. That's right. <laughs> you know? So I don't know. I, I would say it's going to, it's definitely going to, you know, it's definitely going to happen. It's definitely going to launch as far as when that happens. I mean, you know, sometime in 2022, um, hope, hopefully Q1, but hopefully, at right. the end of the day, it's just like, man, we're, we're all kind of waiting together and experiencing this for the first time together. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it's an interesting place as you know, you're a YouTube content creator, and I, I'm getting into that too, to say, hey, put down your phone, don't watch us. But at the end of the day, know. you know, my channel is crypto kindness, I genuinely want what's best for everybody out there. And, and you got to you got to disengage, just put down the phone, there's nothing that's going to happen between it now and when the chain launches, that's vital. Um, and even once the chain launches, the best strategy is to not pay attention because then you won't be uh, tempted to trade it. So I, I just, you know, when someone asks me at this point, I say, uh, go to work, mm -hmm. go to work, make some more money because DCAing uh, dollar cost averaging, if somebody doesn't know that over the next year into both of these projects is going to be a great way to, to build your bags and potentially increase your wealth. So, um, well, where are you going to get the money to do that? That's at work. So, Go to work, engage with your family, take care of your health uh, physically. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's a good idea to still stay uh, on top of things, maybe dedicate a half hour a day to, to watch your favorite streamers or listen to something in the car, um, but don't allow it to engulf you. Mm. And um, sit back and watch. It's a fun, fun ride. It's cool to be excited and anticipating, but don't let that be your only focus because in life, the, the thing that is most important to us 
and can consume all of our time is that which we focus on. Mm. Everything else doesn't matter if you're hyper-focused on one thing. And uh, so change your focus. That's all you got to do. Put your focus on your kids, on your job, on whatever it is that brings you joy outside of your excitement for potential mad games, which is hard. I agree. I mean, it's exciting. <laughs> it's really exciting. No, that's that's true, man. I mean, that's that's important. I think, yeah. uh, I mean, speaking from experience with with anything, if you, yeah, if you you have your focus on, if I mean, it's just like the the dartboard analogy, but you know, if if you're or Richard mentions with the car where. You know, you can have all of the torque and all of the power uh, of, you know, a Formula One or whatever. But mm -hmm. if if its steering wheel is just going straight or it can't go to the direction that you want it, then it's actually, you know, doing more damage because now you're going, you know, so far in a direction that's the opposite of what maybe you should be doing. Yeah. That now you have to, you know, somehow flip that to the direction that you want it to be going. So that's smart, man. I would say. Uh, I totally agree with that. And once again, I think it goes to show you that, I mean, nothing, nothing, whether it's uh, finance or health and stuff like that, as we all know, uh, comes overnight. So that's kind of just a good reiteration of, hey, you know, the slow and steady wins the race and yep. and just uh, sticking to the the core principles and things like that. I agree. Well, hey, we're bumping up on an hour. I, I just, I would love yep. to chat with one more thing with you before I, I got to bounce and go. Yeah, to totally. As I said before. Totally, um, totally. The, the saying, Richard, with the sacrifices, have no expectation of the profit, um, of profit from the work of others. In order for Pulse X to be successful, Pulse Chain has to be successful. And in order for Pulse Chain to be successful, we have to market this product ourselves, you and I, and anybody that's in the community that has sacrificed for these products, we need to be the marketing machine. So mm. I would love to hear from you is what you would like to see from our community, what you think would mm. be um, steps that we all could take to be successful at uh, bringing outside people into our island, essentially. Uh, we, we, we're not going to be successful with the only people that are on the island, we need to make that bridge happen. We need those to come into our community and uh, adopt our technology. So uh, last, last topic here, um, yeah, totally. Brand, tell me what you think, what you'd like to see, how we are going to attract the eyes of others to come over and, you know, lift everybody up. Right. Yeah. Great question. And uh, once again, I would say, uh, like you mentioned, leading by example or the community itself. So one thing that we see a lot with, crypto these days is Bitcoin's now over 13 years old. And mm -hmm. sometimes you, you know, you're, you're walking out in public. Like you said, the only thing that matters that's so separate from the little world in here is the world out there. Right. And so, uh, I mean, I've got a number of different little apparel. This oh, yeah. is just one of them cool. I bought on Amazon. Right. But um, I think it's cool to kind of just, I mean, if you, if you truly know something, you don't just believe in it. Right. But you, you know that, Hey, this is going to benefit a lot of people yeah. that are, you know, either not in crypto or that are in crypto and might not realize the opportunity that's in front of them. Right. They might be, you know, spending so much money on, on fees. I mean, you know, there's a website where you can see how much fees that one address has done particularly. And, <sighs> you know, I know people that have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars just in Ethereum fees alone. And so sure. that's money that's getting wasted. But the point is, is I would just say, uh, try and be like a good leader by example, right? If people are are genuinely curious about crypto or investing in things like this, I mean, you can always try and uh, you know give them an opportunity or at least present some of the the facts and the information of, hey, you know, here's what's what's happening. Here's what could be a good opportunity for you. And just once again, leading by example. I mean, the, the apparel I think is something that is uh the logo itself you know kind of kind of does a good job you know it's i mean sure it's the pulse chain and stuff but it's not something that's necessarily recognized to say some of these other brands right that people might be wearing like a nike or whatever and so sure. i think that that's kind of unique for people to be able to experience but that's all i would say is just you know trying to help others out and once again as, as you mentioned with the kindness that it can be easy even for for someone that is super nice and that is super kind to even also become 
uh, like flustered or, <laughs> or like maybe not overwhelmed, but maybe impatient. Right. And sure. Um, I've learned from modding the pulse chain com telegram months ago that like, okay, you know, I've helped out for a month or two, what it was, and then had to take a break for that same reason that I wanted the other moderators to step in and, and be able to answer those questions. And so I think that if, uh, you know, if you know that you can deliver a good message and be able to help someone, then that's what we should all be trying to do. Yep, I agree. And, and I think, um, you know, we'd be, we need to be advocates for our product. We need to, um, I think it would be beneficial for us to, you know, on Twitter and go into other forums, the Ethereum forum and, and the Polygon forum and just share information. Don't go over there and say, your product mm -hmm. sucks. Come check this out. Just say, hey, y'all, I just did a transaction on Pulse Chain, blown away by how fast it was and how cheap it was. You need to check that out. And mm -hmm. um, it just genuinely share the information uh, almost from a position of non-bias so that it, it generates um, curiosity instead of, oh, this guy's shilling. Um, and then when people do ask questions, you and I talked about this earlier, when people ask questions, just answer the question nicely and yeah. don't be on the defense. We, we, we need to put our swords down and we need to start mm. embracing people that ask questions that are just a critical thought. You know, right. I, I, I love my wife to death, but sometimes she frustrates me because I'm the type of person that gets all excited about something. And I'm like, oh yeah, I got to go all in on this. <clears throat> and what she always does which I've learned a bunch of, or from, excuse me, is she's like, totally. okay, you're super excited about this. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to research the other position, right, the other right. side of this coin, because I want to know what I don't know. And I want to totally. know um, what I need to learn. And when people come are going to be coming over to our community and they start asking us these questions, we need to think like that. Okay. Like, oh yeah, mm. of course. At one point in my life, I thought, you know, I heard it was bad or, you know, the yeah, OA address yeah. this. And instead of saying, oh, right. you're stupid, you're a pleb, you don't know anything. Say, you know what? That's a really good question. And let me help you mm. understand that. So that way you can then think about other good questions that I can answer and show you that we're all here to help and we want you right. in our community. So thanks so much for coming over today. Just be kind. Mm. You know? That's all it mm. takes. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the very last thing I'll say is that that is your opportunity when someone is asking a question. Uh, it's not because they want to waste their time usually, right? Or that they want right. to concern troll, you know, 99% of the time. It's because, hey, they're interested. Why else are they spending their time, you know, chatting with another person or in a voice chat? And so, like you say, that is your opportunity to really, you know, and, and everyone has it, right? I mean, I'm not always in the chats. I mean, I'm on the videos more than I am in the chats. So the people that aren't on the videos that are in the chats more, they've kind of got more of a responsibility or maybe more of a chance at least to have that practice of, hey, here's your opportunity for someone that's new that wants to learn more that, you know, hey, you have a chance to answer their question to help them in a genuine way. Someone like once again, the last thing is crypto heartbeat had a couple of bad experiences in, in pulse chain com. Right. Yeah. And then another guy, whether it was in voice chat or, or text, he never mentioned it, but another guy had kind of, you know, started messaging him that they were talking back and forth and, and was able to answer those questions, you know, whether it was public or whether it was them messaging uh, back and forth. And so I think that, you know, just trying to be a leader by example, like you mentioned, and, and I mean, the very, very last thing is Richard mentions of, hey, the reason I'm such a good debater is because I have, you know, exercised both of the of the thoughts, right? This side or that side yeah. and all the other sides in between. And as long as he can kind of, you know, be on the side of truth or the side of logic and things like that, he'll be able, he'll be able to convince them. And so I think a lot of us can kind of do the same thing via knowledge, educating ourselves. And that's what makes it better for others. So. Thanks again, man. For yeah, uh, yeah. I, I want to just follow up on that because you brought up a really good yeah. point about um, you know knowing the other side. You got to know both mm. sides of the argument so you can uh, thoroughly understand where they're coming from. So you also then know how to answer the question. And the uh, we need to we need to view people asking questions as opportunity because that's what it is. They've taken the initiative. They they've taken the first step out of their yard and into ours. And now they're asking questions. So let's invite them over to the campfire, show them why our community is awesome, embrace them and give them a positive experience. And um, I, I'm excited. You know, 
80, 90% of the people in all the chats are genuinely nice and excited to help and really, really um, knowledgeable. And it's, it, I would also call on that percentage, the you, the me, the crypto heartbeats, everybody else, is that when we do see somebody act a fool in our uh, Twitter feeds mm. or our, our telegrams, we need to say, hey, y'all, we, we don't have any space for that anymore. We need to, right. we need to welcome folks in and, and really uh, almost moderate our, our own community a little bit. So enough about that, man. This has been great. I, it, it's such a treat to talk to you. Hey, you too, man. Uh, do you want to tell people just real quick where, where they can find you or, or any last minute updates? I, I mean, I know your stuff will be in the description. Sure, but, sure. No, I appreciate uh, that. Anything for the, for the channel. Yep. Uh, my Twitter handle is the same as my Telegram, which is at Kindness Crypto. And I did start a Telegram group, which is t.me slash crypto kindness for uh, newbies to come on over and ask questions and be in a safe environment where we're just going to be nice and answer your question very much like I've spoken about. So uh, happy to help. Um, happy to very, very excited to be a part of this community. I can't thank you enough, um, Brandon, for the interview today and the time. And, and you're a great example as one of the people that reached out to me and was just like, hey, I really like what you're doing. Let's talk about it and let's grow together. So thank you for being a leader, man. Awesome. Thank you. And and it is like this, the at kindness crypto yep. uh, on yeah. the screen. Okay, cool. Okay, I need to learn awesome. how to do that. <laughs> I, I know. It, yeah. You know, we'll, uh, we'll all learn together and stuff. But um, anyways, thank you again for coming on and I uh, really appreciate what you're doing and what everyone else is doing. And thanks again for your time. And uh, we'll see everyone next time. It's been my pleasure. Take care.